Hello class. Today we're looking at day two of adding and subtracting mixed numbers. So we're going to start about where we left off on Friday to begin this lesson. So you're going to need your Chromebook, your daily notebook, and your pencil or pen. Okay, remember when you're watching these videos, I do expect you taking notes. When I pause for you to work problems, I need you to pause the video and work the problem and then come back uh, once you've finished it and then we will go over the answers to those. Okay, so it is important to do that. Make sure that you're taking notes. This is not just a movie. You know, this is an instructional video. Okay, so let's see if we can do a warm up. Okay, so here's the warm up that we're doing today. Okay, this will kind of review what we did on Friday. So we've got an addition of mixed number problem. Okay, so let's review what it is that we need to do to add mixed numbers. So if you remember on Friday, we talked about the steps that we go through. Step number one is to find a common denominator. We must make those bottom numbers look alike. Step number two, we're going to change the numerator to match. Whatever I did to that bottom number, you're going to do the same thing to the top number. Then you're going to add or subtract your numerators. Okay? And then keep your new denominator. Now all of that is, are the same steps that we do whenever we're adding or subtracting regular plain old fractions. Okay, then the new step though when we're dealing with mixed numbers is we have to deal with our mixed number, the whole number parts. Okay, so we got to add or subtract the whole numbers. And then last but not least, you got to simplify. Okay, so with that in mind, what I'd like for you to do, pause the video and answer this question. Okay, let's see how you did. First thing that I would do whenever I'm working a question like this is I'm going to rewrite my problem with blank fractions. So I would do eight with a blank fraction plus 12 with a blank fraction. I'm going to need you to do something like that for the assignment today. So just get used to it. Okay, so then we look at our big denominator. The biggest denominator we have is six. I ask myself, can I turn that four into a six using multiplication? And no, we can't. So I do six times two is 12. Can I turn the four into a 12 with multiplication? Yes, you can and 12 becomes our common denominator. Now you could have also used 24, but you're gonna to have to simplify more at the end. So now we ask ourselves, how did I go from six to 12? I multiplied by two, so I do the same thing to the five, and it gives me a 10. How did I go from four to 12? Well, I multiplied by three, do the same thing to the top, and I end up with nine. So now we're ready to add. Okay, so I add my numerators, 10 plus nine gives me 19. I keep my new denominator of 12, and then I add the whole parts. So I go ahead and add those so that I don't forget to. So 8 and 12 make 20. And now we ask, is this problem simplified? And no, it's not. Because my fraction right here is an improper fraction. So if it's improper, the way you simplify is we divide. So basically the 19 goes in the house. We divide by 12. How many times does 12 go into 19? Once. 1 times 12 is 12. We subtract, we get 7. So this one that's a whole part... It, we're going to add it in to the 20. So that 20 will become 21. The amount that we have left over becomes the numerator of our fraction. And the number I divided by, which was our denominator, it stays the denominator. And we end up with 21 and 7 twelfths. Now we have to ask ourselves one last question. Is 7 over 12 simplified? Because what we're looking for, because what if it ended up as 8 over 12? Would that be simplified? No, it would not. But this type of simplify is we're trying to figure out what do these two numbers have in common? What could I divide them both by? In this one, 7 over 12, we're good. So 21 and 7 twelfths is my answer. Okay, so that's just kind of reviewing what we learned on Friday, or what we reviewed on Friday. So now let's find out where we ended up at. We ended up at this question right here. Now this may have been in the last video, because I think I actually worked through this one and into the next problem, but we're going to do it again just as review, okay, for those of you that have watched the previous video from Friday. So we've got this question right here. Well, it's a subtraction problem, so we follow the same steps that we just did. Okay, we're going to find a common denominator. 4 blank minus 2 blank. I've got 3 and 4, so we're going to multiply those together and get a common denominator of 12. And that's always one way to find a common denominator. With these numbers being so close together, that's really all we can do. Okay, so how did I go from 3 to 12 multiplied by 4? So 1 times 4 is 4. How did I go from 4 to 12 multiplied by 3? So 3 times 3 is 9. So here's where the problem lies. 
can you do four take away nine? No, you cannot. If you've got $4, I cannot come and take away $9 from you. So you have to borrow. So I'm going to go through a two-step process here. Okay, the first part that I'm going to do is I want you to understand what truly is happening here when we borrow. Okay, I want you to see the math, but it's not going to be the way that we're going to work the problems. Okay, so just kind of put your pencil down and watch this part. Okay, so I need to borrow. Well, just like in, in other problems where we've had to borrow, you go to the first number available to borrow from. So for this 4 twelfths, I'm trying to make it more, so I'm going to borrow from the 4. So I borrow from the 4, it becomes a 3. Now what I borrowed needs to be in the form of a fraction and be equivalent to 1 with a denominator of 12 because we've got to have common denominators. Well, in order for this fraction here to be equivalent to 1, I also have to have a 12 on the top. Now this 3 and 12 twelfths is equivalent to that original 4 that we have. But then I have... 4 twelfths more. So when we put all that together, we end up with 3 in 16 twelfths for our fraction or for our mixed number there. Now the whole purpose of that is to make this fraction here big enough that I can subtract this fraction from it. Okay, so that's in essence what we're doing. Now is that what I'm going to make you do? No. Okay, so let me show you what it is that I want you to actually do. Okay, so we're still going to borrow from that 4 because I can't do 4 take away 9. So I borrow from the 4, it becomes a 3. I take the denominator that we're using, put it on bottom, and to find my new numerator, all we have to do is add these two numbers together. 12 and 4 make 16. And you'll notice that's the same amount that we ended up with doing it the long way. But now my fraction is big enough that I can subtract 9 from it. So 16 take away 9 is going to give me 7, 12 and 12, I keep the 12, and then 3 take away 2 is 1. And then we ask, can I simplify 7 and 12? No, I can't, so that's my final answer. So sometimes you do have to subtract using something called borrowing. Okay, so we've now looked at two types of questions that you're going to have when we deal with mixed numbers. Addition of mixed numbers and subtraction of mixed numbers with and without borrowing. Now, I told you on Friday that we were going to do these problems with a twist. Because all that so far, you did that back in sixth grade. So now let's look at the eighth grade version of this. And here it is. Okay. Eight and five eighths plus negative three and one half. So now, not only do you have to remember your fraction rules, but you also have to remember the integer rules. Even though these are not integers, because they do have fractional parts, but we do still have negative rational numbers. So we have to do them using the same rules that we had with integers. So this is the reason why our standard is asked for that multiply and divide rational numbers fluently, because I'm gonna just pile them all together and you gotta be able to do them all. Okay, so in this one right here, if you see some integer signs, in other words, you see positive and negative numbers, I need you thinking about those integer rules. And we had a few of them. If it was addition, Signs are like add, signs different, subtract. Take the sign of the number farthest from zero. If it is subtraction, change subtraction to addition next to its opposite and go back to your addition rules. Okay, we'll talk about multiply and divide a little bit later on. So in this one right here, it is an addition problem, but I do have positive and negatives. So that means if it's addition, my signs are different, we're actually going to subtract our numbers. So we need to do this problem according to a subtraction problem. And once you've determined what to do, you just do it. And that's where all the fraction rules come into play. So now, I rewrite my fractions just like normal. I find a common denominator. I look at my 8. Can I turn this 2 into an 8 with multiplication? Yes, I can. So we put the 8s down. Now, what did I do to this 8 to turn it to an 8? Nothing. So I leave it as a 5. What did I do to this 2 to turn it into an 8? I multiplied by 4, so I do the same thing to the 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Now here's where you got to think. Yes, it is plus, it is addition, but this number's positive and this number's negative. My signs are different, so what am I actually going to do with my numbers? You're actually going to subtract them. Okay, so 5 take away 4 is 1. Keep the 8. 8 take away 3 is Five. Now, what kind of a sign am I going to have on my number? Well, the number that's farthest away from zero is the eight and five eighths. So my answer is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, 
positive 5 and 1 8. And that's how you do integer rules with fractions. Simple as that. Okay, so let's see if you can do another one. What if I were to give you this one? Okay, well this one says negative 5 and 2 fifths minus 4 and 3 fourths. So the first thing you look at is you notice that one, my numbers are positive and negative. Okay, two, you'll notice that it's a subtraction problem. So what do we do if it's a subtraction problem that has integer signs in it? Not integer numbers in this case, but integer signs. Well, subtraction says change subtraction to addition next to its opposite. So I'm gonna come up here and we'll change this subtraction to addition and this number here to its opposite. And now you'll notice I have negative five and two fifths plus negative four and three fourths. So what are we gonna do with those two numbers? Signs alike, so we're gonna add them. So pause the video and add these two mixed numbers together for me, please. Okay, so let's find out how you did. First thing we do is we find a common denominator. So I'm gonna rewrite my problem so that I can find the common denominator. So we've got five and four. So we go through our five times tables until we find one that five and four both have in common and we find out that that is 20. So now we change our numerators. How did I go from five to 20 times four? So two times four gives me eight. How did I go from four to 20 times five? So three times five is 15. And now since my signs are alike, negatives and negatives, all I'm gonna do is add them together. So eight plus 15, that's going to give me 23. I keep my 20 and a negative five and a negative four make negative nine. Now, if you get that far, you get at least half the points on the, on, you know, on any problem that we do, because that shows me that you understand how to add mixed numbers together. But now we need to simplify. Simplifying is the same as we did on the previous problems. This one right here, we got an improper fraction. So to do that, we do division. How many times is 20 going to 23? One time. Okay, where do I put that one? I put that into the nine. But that one is still a negative, okay? So it's negative nine plus negative one, which gives me negative 10. Okay, so all of this, we're just trying to find an equivalent to this. So we put that into the, the nine, we get 10. So I then subtract these two numbers. 23 take away 20 gives me three over 20. And then we ask, is that in simplest form? And yes, it is. And that's how we do those. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna give you two more. And I want you to pause the video and answer these two questions. And then we'll work them together. Okay, so let's see how you did. Okay, the first one is just like the ones that we just got through doing. The second one, however, that one's a little bit trickier. We'll talk about that one in just a second. Okay, so let's see how you did. So I'm gonna rewrite five with the fraction bar plus negative three with the fraction bar. And now we notice that this is an addition problem and our signs are different. So what does that tell me I'm gonna do with these two numbers? It tells me that we're gonna subtract them. Okay, so now once you've determined that, everything else is the same as far as fraction rules go. We got five and seven. What will our common denominator be? 35. Now we change our numerators. Five times seven gives me 35. So seven, four times seven gives me 28. Seven times five gives me 35. So two times five gives me 10. And now since my signs are different, we're gonna subtract. So we do 28 take away 10, which actually gives me 18 over 35. And now five take away three is two. And we ask ourselves, are these two, or is this fraction or mixed number simplified? Well, the 18 has a one and a two and a three and a six and a nine and an 18 in them. 35's got one, five, seven, and 35. Okay, so the only factor that they have in common is one. So this number is finished and it is positive because the five had more. Now let's look at this second one. The second one's a little bit tougher. Okay, one, it's a subtraction problem. 
So that tells me automatically I'm going to change subtraction to addition, next number to its opposite. Okay, so I did that. It's now addition. My signs are different, so that means I'm going to subtract my problem. Now, if we had, uh, let's say, 14 plus negative 20 as my problem, what would I do? If I had this one, my signs are different, so I'm going to subtract my number, but which number would I use first? I would use this 20 first. So I would end up doing 20 take away 14. Same thing happens when we deal with fractions. Which one of these numbers is actually farthest from zero? The four. So we actually put it first. Okay, so that's gonna be a negative four with a fraction bar plus, let me, let me write that better. It's a little squishy there. Okay. With a fraction bar plus two with another fraction bar. So because our signs are different, you're going to take the number farthest from zero and write it first. And that allows us to do the subtraction correctly. Okay, so now I've got a 7 here and a 4. So my common denominator is going to be 28. Okay, so what did I do to this 7 to turn it to a 28? I multiplied by 4, do the same thing to the 3 to get 12. What did I do to the 4 to turn it to a 28? Multiplied by 7, do the same thing to the 1. And now we're ready to subtract. 12 take away 7 gives me 5 over 28, and then 4 take away 2 gives me 2. But what kind of 2 and 5 28s will that be? It's going to be negative because the number I used first, the number that was farthest from 0, negative. Okay? So that's how we add or subtract mixed numbers with a twist. Mixed numbers that have positives and negatives in them. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to do a little assignment for me today doing the same kind of thing. So I'm going to give you a series of questions, one, two, and three, and there's some more four, five, and six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm going to give you nine questions. Now this problem, or this assignment is going to be a little different, because I'm going to send you this as a PDF document. So you're going to have to go old school, and you're going to have to then take this problem, and using your notebook paper, you're going to write, right there in your daily notebook, okay, you'll write, you know, add... Let's see, add and subtract uh, mixed numbers, okay? And then you're going to write number one, okay? Then you're going to look at what number one is. Seven and three-fifths plus four and one-third. And then you're going to do this problem on your notebook paper. Okay, now here's what I want to see. Okay, we'll kind of look at this first one together. So I'm going to write 7 with a fraction bar plus 4 with another fraction bar. Okay, and I do want to see you rewriting the problem. Don't do the chicken scratch on the problem and change stuff up. Rewrite it. So 5 and 3, we get 15 is our common denominator. 5 times 3 gives me 15, so 3 times 3 gives me 9. 3 times 5 gives me 15, so 1 times 5 gives me 5. Then I'm going to add that together. 9 and 5 make 14 over 15. 7 and 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 make 11 and 14 fifteenths. Can I simplify this? No. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a box around it. Okay? And then you're going to do number 2. Now you can double column it. Okay? But don't do any more than, than do 1 here and then do 2 here and then 3 down below and then 4. And make sure that everything is nice and neat and that your answer and your work is very legible. Because what you're going to have to do with this assignment is you're going to then, once you are done, you're going to need to take a picture of it and then you're going to need to upload it into Google Classroom. Because that's how I'm going to grade it. Not email it to me, upload it to Google Classroom. There is a way to attach a document. Now if you were to go to this link right here, and I will put this link as one of the references on today's activity, this little link right here will show you, there's a person that will show you how to attach documents in Google Classroom, both using a phone, a tablet, or you could even do it with the Chromebook if you do it carefully. Okay, so there are ways of doing that, but that's what I'm going to have you do. Okay, and we can practice that in class if we need to. But you're going to attach a document to Classroom and turn it in through Google Classroom, not through an email. Okay, so that's what we're doing for the remainder of the period. Okay, so that's what I need you to do. Okay, so until tomorrow, I will see you later.